My name is David MacDougall. I'm, uh, um, I'm based at the Australian National University in Australia, in Canberra, and um, I'm a filmmaker, sometime writer, and uh, a lot of my focus has been on ethnographic film, although the, the division between ethnographic film and documentary is quite blurred, so I sometimes feel I'm just basically a documentary filmmaker. But other times I focus more on uh, ethnographic films. Well, I'm here in Portland for the What is Documentary Conference, and um, I gave a talk at the first session about uh, what I call documentary as process and the, the basic idea being that uh, um, some documentaries are made as a kind of uh, publication of pre-existing knowledge. They're based on a lot of prior research. Other kinds of documentaries, it's actually a research process in itself. It's um, You're making a film to try to learn more about your subject, to discover something about it. So this is a kind of exploratory kind of documentary filmmaking. And for me, the most exciting and interesting kind, because very often you are, um, what you end up doing is a product of what you learn during the making. And this often shifts you into an entirely different uh, direction so that uh, it's quite open-ended. Well, you know, previously, and especially when I was making films using 16 millimeter, and my wife and I made a lot of films jointly in 16 millimeter, um, you almost had to have at least two people, one to, to record the sound, the other for the camera. But with the arrival of digital video cameras, it became possible suddenly for one person to, to do everything, to do the shooting, to record the sound, and of course, as I did, to go on and edit the films. And, you know, I think this changed the nature of the kind of filmmaking that was possible, because we, we now had a situation where you as a single filmmaker were alone with your subjects and the kind of relationship you had with them, the rapport, um, was very different from even a crew of two people who would be perceived as a kind of social unit in themselves and in a sense standing outside the situation. Whereas when you're alone filming, you're much more exposed, you're you're just one individual among many others. And I think that changes the kind of films you can make and the kinds of, um, kinds of relationships you can have with your subject, the kind of intimacy you can have, um, and the informality of the filmmaking, which I think is very important. Um, the camera almost becomes an extension of your body, just a natural way of uh, your interaction with others, a, a medium of communication. Um, it's always there. Um, you, can, uh, you can more or less live your life with the camera as an extension of yourself. And I like to think of it as um, somewhat like a musician's relationship to an instrument that you play and you you become so familiar with that it's, uh, you don't have to think really about the technical side of things. Well, I think when you're filming, you're constantly thinking about what you're doing. You're, you're structuring the film from day to day as you're shooting, and what you shoot today might decide what you're going to shoot tomorrow. In other words, you might shoot a particular scene, something might, hap might happen in front of you and you'd film that. Um, but 
to make that comprehensible to an audience, you'd realize, well, I'll have to shoot another scene that will help explain it, will we'll give the context for it. So in this way, throughout the filming, um, there's a process going on of structuring and thinking through the themes of the film and how they interconnect. And then, of course, um, when you come to edit, you get another chance, in a sense, to, to develop this further. And if you've, you know, I think if you've done um, a reasonable, jo reasonable job in the filming, and if you've been lucky in it as well, if things have gone in an interesting direction for the film, then the editing becomes a complementary process, which enhances that, which enriches it, which de develops some of the themes more fully, um, which makes the whole more than the sum of the individual parts. Um, and the editing gives you a chance, another chance to learn about your subject. Because when you're filming, it's a learning process. You're constantly understanding things better, hopefully. Um, and you're developing your ideas, your insights. But when you're editing, the footage that you've shot can also teach you something. You can learn from your footage. Um, things that you didn't perhaps realize fully at the time, although you understood maybe intuitively. Uh, but you, you become more sensitized to um, nuances of behavior, for example, because you're looking at the same faces, the same gestures, the same actions over and over again on the film. You may see the same shot 300, 400 times. Um, and you get to know the material intimately in that way. Um, in a way that, um, of course, when you were filming it, it was a transient event. It just passed in before you. You did your best to interpret it with the camera at the time. So this, um, I think it's very important to be, um, you know, to have this experience of editing your own material. And for the most part, that's what I've done even when we were making 16 millimeter films, we did most of our own editing. Um, the exception was once working with a very brilliant um, English uh, film editor who had a lot of experience, who was not just a film editor but also a poet, a novelist, um, a remarkable critic, film critic, named uh, Di Vaughan was his name. And um, I learned a tremendous amount from him just working on one film. Uh, and I was able then, on subsequent films, to apply the things I'd learned from him. I think the problem is, though, that when you're working in this way, you're really on your own, you know, and it's very hard to bring another person into it except maybe as an observer in the editing stages, that's possible, but you can't really have another person hanging around uh, during the filming uh, because that's going to disrupt the, the situation too much. As far as... Mm, I don't know, I think in terms of teaching younger filmmakers, I think this can be accomplished through intensive workshops, for example, where you take the students through a series of um, exercises that raise all sorts of questions, theoretical, conceptual, um, and technical. And because the students can observe each other's work, they can, uh, as well as their own, and show what they've been doing to the others, they learn a tremendous amount in a short time. Well, this has been debated endlessly at this conference, um, particularly in relation to questions of authenticity, of truth, um, or truths, the different possible truths about a single situation. 
I mean, I've always felt that um, there isn't a single objective truth out there waiting to be described by someone or filmed accurately by someone because we all come at every event from a different position and the position you come from determines what the truth of that situation is for you. And um, this morning somebody was saying, well, what is accurate representation? Uh, I think it's a difficult question, but perhaps one test would be, is what we see on the screen approximate to what a witness standing there at the time would have seen? would have experienced. You know, that's, that's perhaps um, one test. Another would be, for the filmmaker, to what extent does the resulting film reflect the, um, the kind of experience that you've had yourself in, in the situation. Um, but there are all sorts of uh, other tests you could apply. Um, for example, showing the material to somebody else who was there and um, how this material is read by somebody who comes out of a completely different context and who, who doesn't share your assumptions about what, what you're looking at, who doesn't share the same background, who may make an entirely different meaning out of it. So I'm not going to try to pin it down or to, to uh, describe this in a nutshell, the, what is documentary. There have been many types of documentary. I tend to feel that often documentary has been, in a sense, um, um, you know, sidetracked by other concerns than the concerns that were perhaps there at the very beginning when people like Louis Lumiere were setting up their cameras for the first time in the 1890s. Um, they were interested in exploring a particular world that they saw in front of them and showing that to others. And I think that's the great thing that cinema can do that almost no other medium can do, this, this ability to show others something that we've seen ourselves. Um, Jean Rouche, the famous uh, French filmmaker, said that uh, um, the camera is the only means I have to show you how I see you.